Welcome back everybody to the Renaissance Children's Podcast. Today's episode I'll be talking about non-binary meaning. Here's the official definition of what it means to be non-binary. Non-binary people may identify as an intermediate or separate third gender identity with more than one gender, no gender, or have a fluctuating gender identity. Gender identity is separate from sexual or romantic orientation. Non-binary people have various sexual orientations. That's the official definition of non-binary. I would argue non-binary is, uh, it means anyone, anything to anyone who is actually going through that process as well, who is actually identifying as non-binary. I would also argue that each individual circumstance is going to be a different story, a different uh, meaning. It's like um, emotions. When people say they feel triggered, that can also mean that they're upset. But being triggered can mean something very different to other people. Because you can say you're triggered, that could be like a deep emotional response. Like people just be very upset. You've got to be a qualification. You can't just say you're upset. Because you could be upset because um, you ordered a meal and it's got onions on it and yes, and onions. So that's. But say you can say that trigger yourself, but you've got to qualify it as well. Same with uh, like in relationships, if a man slaps his girlfriend's ass, that could trigger her in a negative way because he didn't ask for permission. Or it could be getting big memories for her, so you could look at some kind of deep psychological trauma. That's why for emotions, particularly on binary, so they got he needs a qualification. But for this, I would argue that non-binary is a state towards transition, typically. Because people are non-binary, they can be non-binary in the sense they don't wish to identify purely as male or female in terms of stereotypes and behaviours. They want to be both. But when I say they want to be both, I mean in the social context. I'm not talking about the actual taking hormone up in the social context so they can do male and female activities, which is often, it does sound incredibly convoluted. That's why I say for something like this, if you were to ask someone who's non-binary, each individual person will give you a different story. Same if you ask a transgender person as well. I would say that being non-binary is a transitionary state into either transitioning from male with your biological sex to female, or female as your biological sex into male, and the non-binary umbrella can be used as a way during the transition as well, because if you are a man transitioning uh, to become a woman, within that period, you might still be living as a man, you may still have more masculine appearance, more masculine sound and voice, so identifying as non-binary could be a solution until you've developed the actual right, you've taken the hormones for a few years, you develop a female voice and that you become more female presenting over time. And the non-binary state could be like a cocoon. In a cocoon, you go through all these changes and then eventually they emerge from the cocoon. as either a male present a male or a female in regards to their gender expression. Though wanting to maintain in a state of both, such as Eddie Izzard. Uh, he identifies as a he and the she. That's perfectly legitimate as well. I hope you all found today's episode enlightening and informative. I hope you didn't find it too confusing. But for these kinds of issues, there's no copy and paste because everybody's different. And that's why I use the motion. With what we define as being happy, what we define as being sad it's subjective what we find funny is also subjective as well what i say as a joke or you say as a joke a person could find hilarious or they could find deeply offensive that's just something to be aware of particularly with this issue it varies from person to person and there's no pdf document that can give you the answers thank you for listening please take care and peace out